Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I suspect that the work I've done uh, against Roy Childs and uh, <clears throat> company, the things I've said against anarchy, the things that I've uh, posted in the last 24 hours uh, proving how stupid anarchy is, I suspect all that's done what it is supposed to do and there are no anarchists left. But just in case there are any anarchists left, we're going to go over a post which I can't find the author to. I assume the author is Oberon Herbert, because that's what it's tagged with down at the bottom here. But we are on the Pearl of Samuelson 1, wordpress.com, and um, it's 2014-12-04, the concept of self-ownership. The concept of self-ownership. I'll put this on Facebook or something, or maybe there will be a link to it. That's what I'm reading from right now. Oh, you stupid anarchists. Self-ownership is often regarded as an axiom, if not the basic axiom of libertarianism, according to this article. There are many formulations of it. The oldest one that I know of is by John Locke, who said that. Now, first of all, he's going to quote John Locke. Great. That's good. John Locke's a good source. Second of all, he's not going to prove what he thinks he's proving with John Locke. I don't know even why Peacock gives them the ground and says that John Locke says this, because Peacock apparently accuses John Locke of saying this. I can't find where John Locke says it, so I don't think that it's even correct. Let's hear what they quote John Locke as saying, which is an identification or formulation. It's a formulation of the concept of self-ownership. Here's John Locke's formulation of the concept of self-ownership. Ready? Every man has a property in his own person. This nobody has any right to but himself. The labor of his body and the work of his hands, we may say, are properly his. He didn't say you own yourself. He said you own your labor and your hands. Because John Locke's not so stupid as to say that you would own yourself. Who would do the owning? He said you own your labor and your hands. You can even own your mind. You can own your brain. You can own your thoughts. Who owns your brain? Who owns your mind? Who owns your labor? Who owns your hands? You! Who owns you? No, you're an agent. Who owns you? No! Who owns you? No! Who owns you? No! You're an agent. You do owning. Does anyone own you? No! Do you own yourself? No! That would be ridiculous. How could you own yourself? That would be pretzel. That would be like standing on your own head. Can you stand on your own head? Can you put your feet on top of your head and support yourself in that way? That's what that would be like. Of course you don't own yourself. John Locke doesn't even say so. He says you own your brain and your hands and your labor. Who owns your brain and hands and labor? You do. Who owns you? No! Just no. Okay. Continuing, this is now the author who says, Quite as often one hears objectivists object to this. The common objection, uh, objection that is, that this make the right, it's a little bumpy his grammar there, the property to basic right, while it is in fact a derivative of the right to life. Correct, you have a right to life and therefore you have a right to property. Yes, that's right. This, in turn, just goes to show that libertarians have no concept of a proper hierarchy of knowledge. Not only libertarians... Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry I don't have the ability to cut these things out. I wish I did. That was just a robocall, like 99% of robocalls, some of which are in Chinese now. Okay, ownership is a concept that implies a relationship between you and an external object, says Leonard Peikoff. Um, so he's got it square on the nose. Now, I don't know why a libertarian could read this quote by John Locke, which does not say that you own yourself. 
and then read a perfectly good refutation by Leonard Peikoff, which says why you can't own yourself, and then keeps going and still doesn't understand it. I don't get that. But that's what I think of self-ownership. So let's go to Ayn Rand's writings. <clears throat> Money rests on the axiom that every man is the owner of his mind and his effort. Now that, that quote is supposed to prove that Ayn Rand is into self-ownership. Let's read it again. Does this prove self-ownership? Money rests on the axiom that every man is the owner of his mind and his effort. He owns his mind and he owns his efforts. Does that mean he owns himself? Because this is now given right here as proof that he owns himself. No, he does not own himself. He himself does the owning of his mind and his efforts. So no, Ayn Rand does not um, agree with self-ownership. <coughs> here are some other quotes from Ayn Rand that supposedly uh, have self-ownership as what their theme or approved self-ownership. Okay. From Ellis Wyatt, Atlas Shrugged. What greater wealth is there than to own your life and spend it on growing? Okay, if you own your life, you still don't own yourself. It's yourself that owns your life. Still, not self-ownership. The next quote, John Galt from Atlas Shrugged. For centuries, the battle of morality was fought between those who claimed that your life belongs to God and those who claimed that it belongs to your neighbors between those who preached that the good is self-sacrifice for the sake of ghosts in heaven, and those who, claim, who preached that the good is self-sacrifice for the sake of incompetence on earth. And no one came to say that your life belongs to you, and the good is to live it. Yes, your life does belong to you, but you do not belong to yourself. That would be pretzel logic. And if you started out with a principle like that, that you belong to yourself, without any clear thinking behind it. You just say, self-ownership, and then you start deducing things from it without any clear basis for it. You're just going to be pretzel logic. You're just going to be humbly, dumbly, tumbly around with no basis. You're trying to put your feet on top of your head and dance, and that's not going to work out well. So you've got to have a proper hierarchy of knowledge. That's true. I don't know, you know, Okay, so let's say that that confuses people. When we say that to them right there, we say you've got to have a proper hierarchy of knowledge. You've got to um, build your philosophy up correctly or else you're going to be confused, right? And they hear that and that's rather quite intimidating. And so then they say, oh, I know these objectivists are highly technical. I don't know why I can't just, uh, you know, have a, a perfectly rational axiom that makes sense to me. You know, like self-ownership, perfectly rational that I own myself. Now, the reason you can't own yourself is it's not that hard to, to come to grips with it. When we say an agent has to do the owning, who would be the agent that does the owning? Don't just dismiss that and say that's all words. Think about that. Think about that objection. Think about the fact there has to be an agent that owns. That could revolutionize your ability to think about these subjects if you took that seriously. If you started to say in your mind, you said, okay, there is such a thing as an agent. That agent is the base of what can do owning. Well, that agent is very important. And it has the power to own things. And then you'll start to have respect for what an agent is. But right now you can't even get started on thinking about those things because we've given you that perfectly good objection that an agent has to do the owning. It can't own itself. That would be a circular logic. We've given you this perfectly good objection and you dismiss it as uh, word play or, or maybe you don't even grasp it. I'm telling you, stop and think about this objection we're giving. Stop and give it some thought, because otherwise you're not going to get anywhere with this self-ownership nonsense. Somebody has to do the owning. Okay. Um, that's, I think it's it, because then after that it goes to say something about Leonard Peikoff, and then he says some other nonsense, which is even more nonsense. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Self-ownership. That wasn't too hard, was it? If you 
heard these people talk about self-ownership or if you buy into yourself. Who's the agent? Who does the owning? Think about the agent being a powerful entity, so powerful that it can do this thing called owning. Now, give some thought to what an agent is. And that is more fertile ground for thinking about than running around in pretzel logic saying that you own yourself. Uh, if, if you had trouble thinking about this concept or if it wasn't clear to you, if I've clarified it for you, perhaps you should patronize me. Skip your coffee tomorrow and give me that five bucks for the month or ten or twenty, as much as you can, as much as you want. And um, I had a job where I used to drive BMWs and Mercedeses, used cars, I deliver them. I, I could go back to that job. Can you believe how easy it would be to drive luxury cars and I gave that up so that I could make these videos? So patronize me if you like uh, the stuff that I do.